Hello! Today I'm going to make a sloth out of wool. Some assembly required. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing some needle felting because I think that that's fun and that's what I felt like doing today. <laughs> I'm gonna make a sloth because it seemed like a really cute and fun thing to make and I haven't made one in a really long time. I'm gonna try to work a little bigger today. The last thing that I needle felted was kind of small, so for something different, I'll go in the opposite direction. Why not? Let's see how it goes. I will be making an armature for my sloth, partly so that he or she can hang on a little bit better and partly because I might animate him later. I might have him do a little video for you. We'll see. So I will start by making the armature. I'll make him kind of sloth shaped and then I will work on his body and build him a little bit up. Let's get started. I have very cleverly forgotten to film the time lapse. Uh, I was sitting here all quietly thinking that I had pressed the button, but I didn't. So I think you can probably imagine how I made an armature. Sort of looks like it could hang on stuff. And that to me is what a sloth is all about. So now it's time to put the core wool. I use a uh, mill waste, which is a little bit softer than uh, you would probably want to use for core wool, but I have a giant, giant bag of it. And so I put it on the inside. It's fine. If you were starting, you would probably want something a little bit more coarse. This works. Um, so I will put that on. I'll make his body and his head and build out his arms a little bit. And then I will come back to you and we'll see what we do next. He is not looking like much right now, um, but that's okay. I would like him to be a little more solid, but as I put the outer layers on, I think that that will felt it down a little bit tighter, which will be great because I don't really like when my felt is too smooshy and squishy. I feel like it gets all distorted. I like what I like. That's just the way it is. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'll get my extra like outside, sort of a brownish grayish sloth color, build that up. And then for the face, I'm gonna try to do it in the style that I've been doing my, my Instagram sketches. So um, hopefully it will turn out, not, I've never done it in, in wool, so hopefully it will translate. <laughs> and also it will be a sloth, which will be different. So cool. The only thing to do is to get to it. So uh, skin, and then I will start working on his face and I'll come back if there's something interesting to tell you. Otherwise, it'll just be fast. So I've seen people sort of adding fur, which is weird because you well, usually what I like to do is I like to make all of my fiber really, really tight and it's smooth as I can get it. And then that's just, that's how it is. But I've seen people trying to add wool and sort of make things furry, which I never tried before. This is the first time and you know, he kind of just looks fuzzy because it's probably not the same kind of wool that they used, but sloths are very hairy and their hair is all everywhere and droopy and stuff. So I thought that while I was doing the sloth, I would just try. I would say, see how it went. And I don't know, I think it's kind of cute. I think it's hard to see it here, but with, with a little, uh, little hairstyling, it might be kind of cool. And I'm glad that I tried the method a little bit I think it would work better with sort of a softer merino kind of wool, but interesting. I'll keep that in mind for the future. So I know that the last time I talked, which was in real life two hours ago, and this is not a fast project, FYI. I said I would do the face and I haven't. No. 
no, nothing is happening here. So face is next. And hopefully it's cuter than that. So good news, I seem to have recovered my ability to make cute things. Hi everybody! So I do have some ideas for his claws. You can tell he just sort of has paws right now. Sloths have some pretty impressive claw action going on. All the better for hanging out with, of course. I'm going to make them out of polymer clay. And if you've been watching, it's because I need to redeem myself for my total inability to use the polymer clay last time. I blame the clay. So let's see if that's actually true. But first, it's time for school pickup. No! Oh, that's hard to watch. Okay, you just hang out and relax while I'm gone, okay, buddy? Okay. <sighs> Something wrong with me. It's time to go outside. Alrighty, he had a good rest and he is ready for claws. So here is my plan. We're gonna use this light brown polymer clay and these teeny little wires. And hopefully, maybe if I pre-stab it with a needle, I'll be able to stick the wire in with a little bit of glue and uh, get some claws going on. So I've cut out my wires, three for each hand because he is a three-toed sloth and I guess we'll get going and see how the claws turn out. And now, according to the instructions, we bake at 275 degrees Fahrenheit, or 135 Celsius, for 15 minutes per quarter inch, so probably not even 15 minutes. 10-15 minutes. And then we'll see what happens. I might need to trim these a little bit more afterwards. I, that's going to be kind of a lot to try to jam into his hands. Maybe? I don't know. I've never done it before. But if it works out... It's kind of a cool way to make claws, so I guess stay tuned and I'll let you know as soon as they cook and then we'll try to jam them in again on camera and you can find out for sure. All right, so we've got claws. We have a hot glue gun. I have little wire trimmers, I think. I don't want to make them so short that they don't stay. I can always trim them a little shorter. I'm going to go like half an inch or something and see if I can jam them in that far. And if not, I don't know. Let's make it smaller, I guess. So I'm going to use a little bit of a hot glue in it. Here, I'll do the first one. We'll figure it out together. So I'm going to just make kind of a poke a hole because they don't just go in. Uh-huh. All right, that works. So a little bit of hot glue in it, I guess. Going to be all stringy. See if I can get it approximately where it was. Shove it in, let it dry, and it works. I'll do the rest. So here he is, just hanging around. I had to. I like the way the fingernails turned out, the claws. I think that the polymer clay is kind of a good idea. I don't know 100% how useful poking the hole was, but it made me feel better. It made me feel like the wire was gonna be able to get in and not just bounce off the outside of him. So, I don't know, probably the next time I would, I would do it the same way, but it worked out. We're pleased. Mm -hmm. So, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give me a claw up 
or also click subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure the notification bell is on so that you don't miss any more videos. They come out on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Definitely tune in next time. I can't stop looking at him. He's cute. And if you can think of a name for him, leave me a comment down below. I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything yet, but I probably will. I don't know. So uh, let me know what you think. How do you think the toenails worked? I just can't call them claws. How do you think the claws work? Uh, what do you think? Have you tried that before? I feel like I've seen people make little tiny mouse hands and stuff like that. It, I don't know, it works out. I wasn't sure how well it would integrate with the, the fiber, but he's happy with himself. So that's what's important. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye. See you next time.